In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this really awesome freezing effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So before we jump into Adobe Premiere Pro, it's really important that we have the correct footage before we start editing. And essentially all you need to do here is just film some footage of you looking up towards where you're going to be jumping and then you want to complete the action. So you're walking in, pretending that your freezed frame version of yourself is in the space, and then you'll just jump to complete that action. Now it's really important that you know exactly where you want the freeze frame effect to be applied within the shots, because if you do a jump, but you're looking down at the ground, unfortunately it's not gonna marry up, your eyeline isn't going to match and it won't look realistic. So if you know you're going to jump in the air and do a cool pose or something, then you need to look up when you're walking up towards that specific freeze frame. So once you've got that, you can now drop this into Adobe Premiere Pro and we can start the editing process. So we're inside of Adobe Premiere and as you can see, I've got my footage on the timeline. So I walk in, I spot myself, I'm a little bit unsure. And then three, two, one, I jump up. And that is where we're going to do the freeze. So this point in time is where we're going to do the freeze. So once you've found that specific point, we just want to zoom into that part of the timeline. We'll press C on the keyboard to load the cut tool or the razor tool, make a cut there, and we'll just move that part of the video up. So I held option on the keyboard to make a copy. Alternatively, if you wanted to copy the traditional way, you can just go Command C or Control C, move over Command V, Control V. But once you've got that copy, you can now just freeze frame this layer. So you can right click, and we're going to go into add frame hold. And as you can see, that has now frozen in space. So I'm just gonna drag this back to the very beginning and then I'll just expand the duration of this over to the right. And we've got this freeze frame effect now applied. However, at the moment you can see because this freeze frame is here, it's actually hiding the rest of the frame. So first thing we need to do is just zoom in. So I'll press fit, go to 100 or 200% can even go closer in if you wanted to go to 400% and we're just going to mask around yourself in the frame. So I'm just going to go up to opacity, select the free draw bezier tool and I'm just going to go around and just mask around myself. Now it's really important that you make sure you do a really clean job of this. There's no point having a really messy mask here because it would just completely ruin the effect. So just take your time, make sure this mask is completely perfect and does what it needs to do. And there you go, once you've completed that, you can now just zoom back out. So we'll go to fit. And as you can see, that layer is now floating in the foreground. So if we just play through, you can see this is where I do the jump and that's where I would freeze. So it's really important that at this point we get rid of the layer below. So we'll just delete this part of the video. However, as you can see, I've just jumped and this has, the background has just disappeared. So I'm just going to get my clean plate. Now the clean plate, if you didn't know, is basically just an empty frame. So this would be the clean plate. And it's really important that you have a clean plate because you could just freeze frame this layer. But if you froze the entire shot, all of those other moving parts of the frame would freeze as well and it would completely ruin the effect. So if you have a clean plate, which is just the video without you in the frame, then you can just add this back in. So this is without the freeze frame, this is with the freeze frame. And when you cut these together, it finishes that effect off quite nicely. Before I carry on with the rest of the video, I first just want to take a quick break to talk about the Brooker Films courses. If you're enjoying these shorter videos that I post to YouTube, then I think you'll love the longer form content that I post on Skillshare. For example, one of the courses that I have on Skillshare is a three hour plus introduction to Premiere Pro. And this course covers everything from import settings to importing your footage, to masking, to multicam editing, to green screen. There's so much in that course. And I'm able to get more detailed and more thorough in this course. So if you're new to Premiere Pro, if you're just looking for some up-to-date advice on how to use Premiere, then this course is for you. So click the link in the description below to check out that Premiere Pro course. Now, if you wanted to as well, you can actually go into that freeze frame layer. And if I zoom all the way in, you can see the edges look a little bit soft. And that is because there is feathering on this layer. So if we turn this down, it will harden up that edge a little bit more. Now, the problem is when you do this, you have to make sure that your mask is perfect because 
Otherwise, you'll see these really harsh edges. So if you've done a really perfect mask, I would recommend having uh, no feather there. But if your mask is a little bit imperfect, then just pull that up a little bit just to soften that off. The only problem is though, you have to make sure at the top of the frame that you don't have this fuzziness from the mask. So because we've added that mask in there, we've got a little bit of the background coming through. So I would just need to just scale everything in to get rid of that. And of course, if you wanted to, if we select everything in this layer and we right click and select nest, we can just increase the scale of this layer to 105. And then we can go back to the beginning, make a new keyframe on position. Then we we'll go roughly 10 frames to the right and we we'll just pull the position across and up. Then we'll go over and we'll pull it down and to the left. And then we'll just copy those keyframes, move over and paste, and then just keep repeating this process. And you'll see when we play this back from the very beginning, we've got this movement. Now at the moment, that's a little bit too aggressive. So personally, I feel like I would wanna go back in and just make some more subtle changes. So we'll go 10 frames to the right even more subtle there we go and now i'll copy and paste these in see what this looks like there we go that looks a little bit better and a little bit more realistic although the animation is still a little bit too animated that sounds weird but if we highlight all of those keyframes and we right click one of those if we go to temporal interpolation and change that to ease in, you'll notice it doesn't look as animated now. It looks a little bit more natural. This is because rather than just starting and stopping when the keyframe hits, it's actually easing into it. So it looks a little bit more natural. And there you go. That is how you do this really awesome effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, the beauty with this effect is you don't have to have a static locked off camera. You could be holding this camera in your hands. However, I would definitely advise against circling around somebody because then unfortunately you have to make sure you've got a 3D version and it gets a little bit more difficult. So try and stick at the same point, but have a little bit of movement if you wanted to add a little bit more realism to this effect, but don't do any crazy camera moves. So this means you can either have this static or you can hold the camera in a physical space, but don't move around a little bit too much. And that gives you a few options on how to improve upon this effect. But there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.